So I want to share some thoughts about concepts. And what I'm talking is about the sorts of files you might do in Photoshop or Illustrator. There's high fidelity, full color, uh, you know, what, what the site, what a website or any sort of product really should look like. And my specialty is in UX design for, for digital. Um, so my thing is mainly websites and mobile apps. Um, and I want to kind of share some thoughts on concepts. Uh, other people may know them as, they could call them mock-ups. Um, although I tend to think of mock-ups as being sort of lo-fi, sketchy wireframes. Uh, or comps is another one that's often used. Um, but I'm just going to use the term concepts. So just to give an illustration, a concept is typically a static image. Uh, so it'll have fixed, often fixed uh, dimensions, fixed ratio, um, usually portrait. And let's just chuck some images in there. Do -do -do. Some sort of foot at the bottom. And uh, let's give it some colour. Here we go. Okay, so uh, that's a concept image. And typically the client sees this and they go, yeah, I like that, but can we just, uh, can we swap this image out for another image, and yeah, I like that, but can we just move, can we make this a bit smaller, but yeah, typically you might go through a few iterations of the client, and then this is the design spec, this is what we build. Um, and there's different variations, different tools people use, but uh, apart from people who go straight to code, um, you know, using tools like uh, Frame.js or Actual IP and outputting as HTML, um, regardless of the tool, typically we still talk about concept images and visual design, high fidelity visual design as a deliverable. Uh, now in a agile methodology, um, which is what, well, what most progressive companies work with these days, the problem with this is that it defines an increment of an entire screen. Okay, so let's say we take each of these elements, let's say we take the mast, Let's get a different colour here. Um, okay, so let's just draw an increment. We'll say this is increment X. Increment X. Okay. Um, in that, we will have increment of the mast, increment of, and you'll see what I'm drawing in a second. Increment of uh, hero image and uh, tagline, increment of say some uh, benefits tiles, some sort of call to action, um, some case studies. All right, and let's put these on a timeline. All right, now I'm just going to look these through. Gonna get a little messy, but so bear with me. Uh, all right, so I got the mast, and uh, hero image. Yeah. Call to action. Oops. Okay, study. Doesn't really matter. All right, so that's an increment, and the concept. The concept encapsulates that one increment of all those elements. Okay, so we take that. And we decompose it, or whatever you like to say, whatever you like to refer to the process of converting this concept back to user stories. Um, and so, in most cases, if you're following a, a proper emergent backlog approach, um, the first increment of the home screen would not be all these elements looking like this. So we're going to take it back a bit. So increment X, we're just going to use a, you know, I'm not going to get into... Um, algebra or anything here, but let's take it back and say, all right, so you're going to go the first increment of all these things, and these in this first increment would go into the backlog, 
Let's use the stories. Okay. So we will build those sequent uh, sequentially. Um, build the first increment of the hero image and whatever purpose that's supposed to serve for users or business. Uh, your product benefits, your call to action, case studies, etc. Your first increment. Okay, great. Uh, now the problem is, we assume that the next increment or increment X is going to be a fixed number of steps or sprints after that first increment. Um, so, you know, we'll start with the basic and then we assume that there will be like, what, uh, an advanced increment or uh, the halfway step or uh, a more mature version of that. But we know where we want to get to. We've already decided that this is where we want to get to, this increment, X. Um, now, for some of them, it might be, uh, you know, if you wanted to follow that approach, uh, it could be, you know, one step to get to that increment. It could be two steps for that one, uh, one for that, three for that, one for that. And so if you were to draw a proper timeline, draw it again. Okay, so first increments. Uh, we might say, okay, well there's two steps to that one, three steps to that, in to that increment, two to that, three for that one, and two for that one. Alright, so these ones require more work. Um, the, you know, the, the product owner in negotiation with business and the team decides that those iterations need further work before they can be released. Um, or whatever the, whatever the benefit is, is more important than other features in the backlog. Okay, that's fine. And they should have the, they should have the, um, they should have the, the uh, power uh, to, to have, to make those decisions. Uh, well, certainly the product owner does. That's their role. And so they've decided to take a step further. That one. So maybe what was here is actually here. And once we've tested it, reviewed it, we've decided actually what was designed needs more work. It could, it's it's okay, but actually we're going to change how this works, especially when we're talking about uh, things like um, I don't know, responsive design, uh, for example. We don't like uh, well, probably the graphic designer didn't come up with the responsive version. They may have done a mobile version, a desktop version. But what about all the different uh, different and breakpoints in between. Um, you know, if we, treat, if we treat all these things in isolation, we come up with a responsive design for the Mart separately from a responsive design for the hero image. And so the breakpoints for this could be, um, you know, 600 pixels. Um, for the Mart, could be 400 pixels. Um, it just depends, it's, you know, depends on the content and the imagery. Um, so, the, so the thing with the concept is that it, it's already decided where we have to get to. Uh, what increment X is going to be, regardless of how many steps it gets to take, how many te steps um, it takes to reach that you know, kind of end point that's been pre pre decided. So let's look at what we've done here. So in this version, the product owner has decided that you know, the actual home screen is going to look uh, more like this. Okay. So in this scenario. We've, uh, I don't get too much detail here, but um, maybe we've decided the hero image, and this is really, like, this is really superficial detail. This is not sort of detail that we get to in user stories. Um, sorry, there's not a lot of sort of super superficiality I'd get to with user stories, but let's just say we decided to make a full, full width hero image with an overlay title. Okay, that's what we decided in the end. And so we've already deviated from the concept. Uh, and the concept now no, lo no longer forms a contract with the client. Um, because we've decided that this is actually a superior product. Okay, so let's just say we have the concept. Let's, let's just encapsulate all these user stories into what has been decided is the product. Alright, this is the product. That's the final increment that was decided by the concept. And then we back that up and we come up with our first increment. And again, we'll just, you know, we'll just lump it all together as a single product. Okay. And we decided that's where we're going to get to. Start here, sprint one, and by sprint five, this is where we get to. Problem is, 
it's not that simple. Because again, the product owner making value based decisions about um, which user stories to prioritize. And you know, if we're doing it properly, collecting feedback from stakeholders and users, and we change the course of the product as we go. So instead of being a linear direction to what we what we originally envisaged, we allow the product to, to evolve and merge based on new data and feedback. So you know, maybe it goes this direction or that direction. And I probably won't stop there because there's only so much of the designer can envisage. Um, it, they've got a very limited canvas to work with. It's a static image. It's based on limited information at the very start of the project. And so the product probably goes further and it could go this direction or this direction. And so on. Obviously not following all these branches at once, but you know, there could be parallel prototyping work or multiple teams, but most likely it should, you know, instead of going this way, it goes that way, and then that way, and that way, and this is the product. And if evidence-based decision making is used, this product is superior to what was envisaged by the team back before the first sprint. So that's why I don't like concept images. Because they're portrayed as a contract with the client that says, this is what we're going to deliver. And we don't want to hamstring ourselves into delivering this when we should be delivering this.